Hello, you're watching Third Angle Insight. This week in Vilnius, Lithuania plays host to a crucial summit between the European Union and Eastern European countries, former members of the Soviet Union. These countries are Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. They are being offered a so-called Eastern Partnership, a deal which includes political cooperation and free trade agreements. It's a highly attractive offer if it wasn't for Russia. These states have deeply rooted political and economic ties with Moscow, and Russian authorities have no intention of letting them fall under the influence of Brussels. After months of pressuring Ukraine to renounce negotiations with the EU, last week Kiev finally gave in, with promises of cheaper Russian gas likely to have sealed the deal. Kristina Belikova has this report from Brussels. On November 21st, Ukraine has announced it halts the negotiations with the European Union on the signing of the association agreement. The reasons mentioned for it was the pressure from Russia and the necessity to protect Ukrainian national security. Ukraine has proposed to EU to engage in a tripartite cooperation, which would include three interested sides – European Union, Ukraine and Russia. Refusal to sign the agreement at the Vilnius summit caused massive protests in Ukraine. In Brussels, Ukrainian decision was welcomed with disappointment. If Ukraine refuses to sign the agreement, they should explain what they mean by asking to initiate a tripartite dialogue. Russia is well respected as a political and an economic partner. If Ukraine means we should continue the dialogue with Russia, the answer is positive. But if they want to include Russia into the negotiations on the association agreement, it is hard to imagine. Despite the recent Ukrainian moves, the EU is keeping the door for cooperation open and still hopes for the success of the Vilnius summit. Meanwhile, Russia, which was blamed for pressuring Ukraine on its decision, says they have nothing to do with it. I think the choice will be an internal issue for Ukraine. We have made this comment more than once, and I think the relationship between Russia and Ukraine has remained unchanged. It is, therefore, meaningless to talk about this problem at the moment. I want to wait and see for the result, the result that would come out later this month about our friend Ukraine. The European leaders Herman van Rompuy and Jose Manuel Barroso in a joint statement say they strongly disapprove the position of Russia in current issue. Stronger relations with the European Union do not come at the expense of relations between our eastern partners and their other neighbours, such as Russia. The eastern partnership is conceived as a win-win where we all stand to gain. The European Union continues to stand ready to clarify to the Russian Federation the mutual beneficial impact of increased trade and exchange with our neighbours, whilst fully respecting the sovereignty and independence of our eastern partners and the bilateral nature of association agreement and DCFTAs. If at the end Ukraine decides to sign the agreement with the EU, despite all the circumstances, the requirements remain the same, including the Timoshenko issue. A week before a crucial meeting which could decide the fate of EU-Ukraine relationship, Ukraine has dashed European plans. In a geopolitical game involving European Union, Ukraine and Russia, it seems the latter has won. However, the EU is not giving up yet. So for Brussels, there is still hope that Ukraine will change its mind. Caught between a rock and a hard place, Kiev finds itself with only two options. Turn to Europe and defy Russia, its number one energy provider, and a major market for Ukrainian goods. Or turn to Russia and shun Europe. For Ukraine, its biggest failure might well be its inability to find a way to work with both parties. Instead, it chose a marriage of convenience over a marriage of love. And the response in the streets of the capital, Kiev, was immediate. Anger in the streets of Kiev after the government's last-minute U-turn, announcing its decision to suspend trade talks with the European Union. It started on Sunday with more than 30,000 protesters rallying on European Square, the anger also fueling demands for the immediate release of jailed former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko. Tymoshenko's daughter, along with leaders of the opposition party, took part in the event. She read an announcement from her mother, calling on the protesters to continue demonstrations until November 29th, the last day of the Vilnius summit in Lithuania, in the hope their government would change position. This current situation means that now we need to thoroughly finish what has been done by the Orange Revolution in 2004. 
we must press the government to sign the association agreements with the EU at the Vilnius summit on November 29. Otherwise, the agreement will never be signed. But the root of Ukraine's problems remains to a large extent linked to the country's dependence on Russian natural gas supplies. Ukraine imports some 50 billion cubic meters of gas from Russia each year, according to a deal signed in 2009. However, the price of gas in Ukraine, at over 400 US dollars per thousand cubic meters, is nearly four times higher than the price paid by some other countries, and this has been hurting the country's industry. We are getting uh, the most expensive gas from Russia. So that obviously cannot continue uh, because other uh, because our industry is suffering and uh, becoming less and less competitive. Ukraine needs Russia because it's the largest supplier of gas and probably the only one that we have currently. Then Russia at the same time needs Ukraine because uh, it's the largest consumer of its gas and um, the transporter of its gas uh, to Europe. Last year, the country increased its own gas production to 21 billion cubic meters, and Ukraine is thought to be one of Europe's largest holders of shale gas, with estimated reserves of up to 1.5 trillion cubic meters. But another way to bring down energy prices could well be to work with Russia rather than against it. The pro-Russian government appears keen to formally join two Russian-led organizations, the Commonwealth of Independent States and the Customs Union. In March this year, the Ukrainian Prime Minister Mykola Azarov pushed for negotiations to become an observer to the Customs Union. Customs union means a lot to Ukraine's economy, as the annual trade volume between Ukraine and Russia reaches 65 billion US dollars, which is higher than that of the EU, approximately 50 billion US dollars. Therefore, it is of great importance to maintain steady economic and trade relations with member states of the customs union. Meanwhile, a series of domestic market protection policies of the customs union also favours Ukraine. But both Russia and the EU have repeated that participation in either of the blocs would mean exclusion from the other. In other words, Ukraine has to choose. For those protesting on the streets of Kiev this week, the choice was an easy one. I've come here today for my children and the children of my children, so they can have a life that lives up to real European standards. I think more Ukrainians now have faith that everything will get better. We will become part of the European Union in its real sense through Western-style reforms. You've been watching Third Angle Insight. For more news, reports and in-depth analysis, visit gbtimes.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. I'm David Keaton. Thanks for watching.